Welcome to Azalea Studios. I am Delta Tango Mike, and today I'm going to talk about an art show that I'm working on with my brother-in-law, uh, about the artwork that I'm going to be working on for the show that is uh, in collaboration with my brother-in-law, Lord Yada. So uh, I got a lot of stuff out here. It's taken me a while to get set up and get going, but I do want to share a little bit with you, a little bit about my process, and show you some of the pieces that we are working on, all right? So let me go ahead and switch my camera so you can see my table. Ooh, it's a lot of stuff. But basically, what we got going on here is a few things uh, that I'm going to paint on, and I'm going to talk about what's over here on this pile. And, uh, and then you can see some of my paints, some of my markers. I do have a few paints here, some more markers there. Uh, these are the Chart Pack AD markers, awesome markers. A ton of Sharpie and Montana and Molotov uh, markers on this side. Got a few uh, paints over here, a ton of brushes. I got some more on this side. Um, these are uh, these are all brushes that have seen lots and lots of miles of walls and canvas. But at the end of the day, what I'm really here to work on is these faces. So let me show you a couple of faces, and it's going to be tough to see because of the light. But that is Lord Yada. This is W. <laughs> Bone Crusher. All right, all right, all right. My brother, Yeska. Word up. We got uh, William Figgins. Oh, yeah, High Impact Media. Mr. E, the Motivator. <laughs> CMC himself. Bam Joyner. Marcus Williams, DJ Osmos, my teacher, rest in peace, Carol Little, Mr. Soul, and Kevin A. Williams, aka WAK. Whack. And, uh, and so basically, our focus is, in this show is to shine the light on the members of our arts community who have been very instrumental in moving forward the arts and the culture and uh, in spaces that you don't normally uh, get access to. And, uh, and just speaking on my own um, experience, coming up as an emerging artist 20 years ago, I got here to Atlanta in 1994, and uh, and so coming up many many years ago, um, there, there, we did not have Google, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have all these online resources that um, uh, that you can then find current information. There were libraries; you can go to the library, find books and magazines, but a lot of a, a lot of the information that we have available today was very hard to come by, and it was very tough to just walk into a place and start asking questions and let and, and, and expect them to answer them and take care of you. Uh, our schools have always been around, but I, I'm not an art school kind of person. I'm not a school person at all. So coming up in those days, it was um, you had to get out on the streets and get to meet people. I heard about our drawing sessions. I'm like, what is that? People sit around drawing together? That's crazy. I want to go. Um, I heard about um, artists, uh, art shows and events that uh, was like, okay, I want to go check that out. And I, I got to see how the own arts community takes care of our, its own community by creating opportunities where artists can show off a piece, by creating opportunities where artists can come together and share information. And, uh, and, and no one is out to charge anyone or no one is out there to... Um, make it a uh, make turn someone into a client it's all about growing building collaborating so that we can get to live the life that we want to live as working artists and so that was been my experience and with this show what we want to do is just touch on a few a very few of all of those people and artists that we've come across in these all these years and who continue to make an impact, made an impact before, have collaborated with us, have touched our careers in one way or another. I'm very lucky that uh, Lord Yada was there 
20 years ago to teach me how to paint. I had heard about paints, I had heard about canvases and paintbrushes and, uh, and all these things, but it was never something that I felt that I could uh, figure out how to make it work for me. So drawing was my thing. Pencils, markers, color, color pencils. I got a ton of pencils, I got tons of markers. I become very, very proficient in drawing just about anything I want when it comes to markers and pencils and pens. But canvas was always a thing that was very hard for me. So here comes Lorgata. We started a tattoo shop in 1997. I met him in 95, 96, something like that. And by 97, we opened our own tattoo shop. It was probably in 95 when I met him. And, uh, and we opened our own tattoo shop. And then uh, in our studio, our art studio, our tattoo studio, um, he would sit around and paint. He'd break out a couple paints, break out some, uh, some paints and, uh, and some brushes and a canvas. And uh, here's one right here. And then he would paint, he would draw, and then he would put the canvas on his lap and sit there and paint. And, uh, and I would see him and I would watch him and how he carefully moves the brush and all that stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, it doesn't look so hard as I thought it was. And my experience so far has been to use a brush to push the paint around and not being able to control the bristles, control the brush, uh, um, and, and it getting away from me by expanding too far. You know, when you're sitting there and you're brushing and then now next thing you know, the brush bristles are all over the place. And now I've lost my line. I'm, I'm very, uh, um, when it comes from the art style, I'm all about those draw, those clean, smooth lines. And so when I watched him paint, it, um, it unlocked a few things in my head. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to go for that. I like that. I want to try it for myself. And so that was my experience with painting. Loretta showed me a lot of stuff. And now here we are 25 years later uh, putting on our show together. The, the last show we were in together, um, he put in a piece of one of my shows a couple years ago and uh forget if he did i know he yes he did yeah 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 it was uh the um the sharpie slam uh a couple years ago he put in a skateboard but together we haven't been in our show together uh since uh 2005 or so that's when we used to have our tattoo shop that's when we uh closed down the studio the shop in ponce de leon vanish point studios so uh, here we are. Let's do this. We're going to do this uh, event. We're going to have these amazing pieces on the wall. It is February the 1st. I think that's the date. Uh, I want to check the date. It is February the 1st. I want to say it is. I know it is because <laughs> I forget. Yep, February 1st. It is at Tri-Cities Tattoo in East Point. It is right across the street from East Point Marta Station. So come on through. And um, while we're sitting around hanging out, we're going to paint a little bit. Let me show you um, some of my, um, my uh, supplies. I have these uh, gray matters paper palette so that I can squirt some paint on this and get to painting. Uh, before I paint big, I like to practice on smaller pieces and get myself back into the groove because I paint ever so often. Uh, I draw more than I uh, paint in my regular schedule. Here's a, a canvas panel. So it's very tough and uh, uh, stiff. So in this canvas on one side, right now it has plastic that I need to take off, but it has canvas so that I can draw on it and paint on it. There we go, let's do that. Then uh, I have another uh, Gray Matters paper palette. So these are just little sheets of paper you tear out and you can put paint on. Um, but what I, what I instead do, instead of this, I do have a, a plastic palette that I use. And then uh, these are canvas uh, uh, sheets. So it's acrylic. They're canvas sheets so that they come in a pack or a pad. And uh, these are all busted. Um, but they're still useful. I think this is pr probably from an art class somewhere. And uh, as you can see, I don't, I don't use up a bunch of them. But they're very affordable. And what they allow you to do is to paint on sort of like paper. It's canvas paper. And uh, I got a few here. And, uh, and so that gives you a chance to go ahead and warm up 
to me, it's all about warming up and getting into the zone of using that media. When it comes to digital and pencil, I'm always drawing and I'm always uh, um, sketching, but uh, when I know that I wanna work on a particular project, I sit there and I'll do a couple of drawings to that, that fit that art style and, and that are in that medium to get me going into that zone, into that piece. Most of the time I will have music on um, or the television. As you know, I'm not, um, I'm not afraid to tell you I am a Judge Judy fan. So I'll put on some Judge Judy and then um, have that working in the background. So it really comes down to creating a space for yourself to create to get that get into that art zone and create that which you're here to do um, you also want to have a space now of course you know uh, I'm 20 years into my career I got a this big room right here I got the table I took a while to tape it up because I do have uh, paper on this table so I don't mess it up there's paper on the floor and so on but if you tr work, if you try to, if you try and get these uh, very simple, easy to use materials, you don't need a lot of space. Um, it'd be nice to, to paint and then leave the stuff behind, leave the materials behind so that you can uh, come back to it when you're ready. But um, you got to start what you got. Take the first step, take this first, second step, and then just get going. So let's go ahead. I'm going to draw. I'm going to move all these heads over because I'm not going to touch these heads until after I've already started painting. So that means, so that way, by the time I get onto the heads, I will have practiced enough that I'm in my zone and I can just keep rolling, moving through the paintings. I already figured out uh, my technique, my style. I know what I want, I know how I'm gonna do it, but I need to practice, practice. So let's move some of this stuff out, there we go get this right here. I have a canvas back here. There it is, it's right there. And uh, that's the style that I'm going for. I've worked with my wife on a couple of paintings and, uh, and so that's the kind of technique that uh, the style that is gonna be on this artwork. So, all right, so we go, let's, uh, let's go ahead and boom, here we go. So I have my canvas paper. I got three sheets, I only need one. And I need a pencil. So what I like to do when I paint, and um, of course everybody has their different techniques, uh, so you go for what you feel works for you. Go ahead and grab a pencil. This is a tricolor, I don't know how to say this company, Koinur, Koinur, how do you how do you say that? There it is, look at that. And, uh, and it's like triangular. I'm a pencil freak hoarder and uh, whatever I find something I like I, I whenever I find something I just want it you know whether I like it or not who knows all right so so what I like to do is actually use a lighter color so let's uh, use this gray one we'll see how it works oh yeah it's okay it's good it's good and gray. all right and so um, I know I have painting that I want to start with and uh, and I'm just gonna get to it and so one thing is that I do when it comes to um, painting is that I need to have a sketch and um, in this case I'm working on a drawing that I've already drawn before digitally so I already know what's going to look like and I've worked out some of the details so now it's just a matter of sketching it out and redrawing it and, uh, and if you caught my live stream uh, last night on um, Behance then uh, you will have seen this um, this drawing. So I get some of the sketching in, and then I go ahead and uh, get some of the shapes, sketch it out, get the shapes in. And as, as I'm doing right now, it's hard to see, you can't tell what's happening. But there it is, there's my face, oh yeah. And I'll show you right here. There we go, come on, there it is. Yeah, that's me, DTM baby, word up. Okay, so now, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead here, bam, bam, there it is. So now I got the basic, I use pencil, very light. I'm not drawing very hard, and this is a very soft uh, uh, 
graphite anyway. So there it goes. Boom. Um, and so when I, the technique that I'm going to try when I paint this one is going to be not the technique when I use with the paint on the other. So now let me grab a marker. I have these cool markers. They are a Sakura Perma Pack. They're very cool uh, in terms of uh, how they draw and write on just about anything. They're, they're good for uh, anything. Of course, you know, the Molotov, Molotov, um, one for all. These markers are amazing. Look at that big fat marker. Just start drawing. Let's, let's draw right here. Just cause, just cause. Come on. Boom, this is my old signature. I messed up, I need to do my newer signature. 2020, baby. Ooh, and it's funky. Um, then I have, of course, more of those uh, um, uh, Perma Pack. They're very cool. These, these are like a lot, a lot. Maybe a little bit more than uh, Sharpie markers because uh, Sharpie marker paints are really great. Um, they paint on any surface, but the black markers, the black Sharpie markers, um, um, they, uh, they slide over the, its own ink or its own paint so as you draw and then you come back and try to clean that line it'll leave a mark inside that black line it'll kind of leave an empty space like kind of like a wipe like you're wiping it off so i don't like that tops are good except i only have the big fat markers for those so there goes more sharpies um more sharp these sharpies are good they also do the same thing they 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 uh when you come back and do another line it um if it's not dry enough, it'll leave a mark inside that line. And then these markers are great um, because of the, the fill tip, but they are also big fat markers. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to show off some of the markers that I have over here. And uh, I don't have any. Oh, uh, here's a Prismacolor marker. Why is it so dirty? It's a uh, it's beautiful marker. Look at that. Oh, this is silver. Ooh. Yeah, 2020, baby. Yes, that's hardcore. Yeah, Whew, and it's funky. I got, I got too many markers. I want sometimes to carry a marker with me. All right, so now let's go ahead and get this marker because it's the one I want. This, this um over here, I have another sharpie. So the sharpie will be similar in how it works, in that um. Um, uh, in, in that uh, it leaves the kind of mark that it leaves, but there is a color difference. Once you start using them, you'll understand that there is uh, that they, you, they feel a little bit different in the way they look. Now, the only thing that I'm really here to do with this Sharpie is to actually leave a mark so that I know that's the painting that I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead, what should we do? Okay. So we got that. Mm -hmm. This that's good because it leaves a fat side and a thin side. This also has a fat side, and see just right here, I can tell there's a difference in tone. So unfortunately, Sharpie, you're out. All right, ooh, and they're all funky. Like what happened? I don't remember them being this funky. Let's go with this side. Yeah. All right. So now I have my drawing. And uh, I'm going to draw. Let's get to it. But it's not going to be like a drawing the way you usually draw where there's clean lines and, and the, the line ends and another one begins. This one is just going to have very different, weird. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just drawing, right? Drawing, drawing, drawing. Look at that, bam. There it is. Sorry, I ain't got nothing to say, I'm just drawing. But basically, I'm looking for shapes. I'm creating shapes. And basing these shapes on the shapes that I've already drawn uh, with the pencil. Now, I'm not using the same lines. I'm not trying to match up 
the same lines at all. I, I'm using them at the old lines, the original, there we go, the original pencil lines as a guide of, um, of the overall look and feel, but not the exact same. There we go, boom. As a matter of fact, let's go like this. Uh, mhm. Mm mhm. I didn't like that line. See there, and there's no undo here. Like once you start, that's it. got a few so now it's starting to look more like this look at that <laughs> crazy oh yeah i like it it's practice this is the practice round you know and i'm drawing it on this uh, canvas paper so if i don't like it it's cool 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 i still i have some bigger canvas uh, there's a blank one canvas back there and i'm not touching that until i'm ready and i know i have the design that i want there's that, they still have that fear of um, wasting. You know, I had that fear when it came to um, uh, sketchbooks. And now it's just, uh, it's that fear when it comes to um, canvases. It's like, well, I'm not gonna draw something until I'm for sure because I don't wanna waste that canvas. But it doesn't matter. You should just draw. All right, got it, got it, got it. There we go. Just drawing. Boom. Like it. So now let's do the hair. Got it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Now, these lines don't have to be perfect. And, you know, even that one that I don't like, the line I don't like, I can do something about that and get rid of it. So I am going to connect that mustache. Got it. Oh, hold on. Boom. There it is. There we go. Got it. Good, 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 good. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like. Whew. And there it is. So now, as you can see, I did the sketch and then the black marker line work. And that's all we got so far. Next is going to be the, um, the painting part let me get my this is my paint board so it's, it, this is cool thing about this paint board is that uh, you're able to put paint and mix paint in all these different spots and then if you want to keep that paint for later you put the top on clip it back on and it's it is sealed it has a little rubber, rubbery thing here. Yeah, still there. And it seals it so that the next time you need those colors or you're painting, you can go back and use the same stuff that you left behind. So I do like that. That is very cool. That's my little, my little go-to thing. All right, so now that I have that, set this one over here. Grab that, that one here. No more markers. Not right now. When I come back and actually fill in or do the redo the um, the line, then I'll start choosing the markers that I'm going to use, and it most likely be the same ones. I'm going to try to make it these uh, black sharpies, but we'll see. 
the meantime, let's put away these other ones. We got uh, some paints here. I don't know about this hot pink, but we got some brown, some yellows, different yellows, another different yellow. I don't want green. I do want some red, maybe reddish. Is this a red? This is uh, also red too. This is a dark brown, and this is another dark brown. There you go. That's my colors. That's good. I do have little ones right here. Uh, premium satin. These are the ones my wife uses on her project, so I'm going to just have them here anyways. Just see what happens. I don't know if they'll mix well. And that's the thing is that I, I don't focus too much on the science of painting. It's like, let me grab some stuff, use it to paint, and see how it works. So I'm going to use these kind of um, paint brushes that, that are very flat. I like these because then you can uh, use them to guide your paint and then edge, do, do, that square edge allows you to edge out some areas. Um, the stiffer they are, the better they are for me, the way I use paint. Um, and because it's acrylic, I just push it around. Um, so that's the paint, the brushes that I'm looking for. I got a couple of bigger ones right here. They're smaller in length, but they are um, stiffer and big and wider. So then I can do more with that. So I think I'm going to start with these, actually. And let's see, really, eh, that's not going to help because of the size. It's too fat for some of the areas. Let me... See if I can turn this a little bit. No, it's not no better. It's not any better, Dan. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying, yo. All right, so, so we got the paints. Let's move these paints out. Get you guys out of here. Mm, maybe the black and white so that I can do different tones. But these colors over here, all right. So I can put up all this right here. Oh, I mean, that's not what I want. I want this right here. Much better in the middle. All right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, let's use this one. Let's start with this one. Let's see how it goes. Because some of these gaps are too little. So this one, let's go with this one. I got it, I got it. So let's start with... Uh, the brown brown let's start with the dark brown so put some in the thing oh that's a that's a gray uh graphite hmm i didn't expect that and uh i'm never gonna use it that dark so i'm just gonna throw another color on top of it and mix it up in the meantime i'll come back to that color and let's get some red there you go and I did not get my cup of water, so we're just going to go ahead and do what we can right now. Um, as a matter of fact, I do, want, I do want a dark version of this red because it's too bright. Put a little black in there. I'm all about um, primary colors, but if I don't have a color already... Like that neon then i'll mix i'll mix it up and then that's it so now i'm just kind of gently brushing away the paint there you go probably do a couple of layers especially since i'm gonna do some uh, i do want to do some shadows but we'll see and highlights there we go nice let's pick this one and i like squishing the paintbrush on the canvas like i said um lord gotta show me how he painted there weren't like real classes where he sat down and we worked on something but it was enough to pick up what he was doing however and all this time i just paint how i paint you know i couldn't just paint now what's going to happen with this um all these lines, they're going to kind of disappear. They will get lost, which is okay, but not completely. You're kind of still going to see them under the paint. 
that's um that's one thing when it comes to sharpie and some of these markers is that they almost never fully disappear and now i feel i feel the need for the water now should have had my water ready yeah i did so much to set up you guys i'm just gonna forget something all right let's go here And that's it. All right. So I'm going to um, speed through the next part. And we'll come back when we're further along. And there's some parts where I did not even use the um, a line. Here we go. Sometimes when you start with a fat line, a fat thick line you as you're working through the line you twist the brush so that you get a thinner line yeah and I always remember you can pick up the piece it doesn't have to you don't have to like twist your body or your hand and you know do weird stuff. Nah, just move it around. Go like this, pick it up. Just be careful where you lay your hand because you got paint on the canvas. So if you lay your hand on that paint, you're gonna mess up the paint and have it on the back of your hand. There you go. Look at that. Boom. Very neat. Once I get past this first one, and I get my uh, get warmed up into painting, then I'll break out like three or four of the heads and I'm gonna draw on them at the same time. I'm gonna draw on all of them first and then I'm gonna um, paint on them and I'm gonna be painting like on three or four of them at the same time. That's what's gonna happen. Paint several of them. That's a big glob of paint right here. That was too much. You know better. All right, let's grab this. Stick it right there. Maybe I should take some painting classes. I don't know. It's just not into uh, the classroom thing. So it has to be with hanging out with a painter. I have to ha hang out with other painters so I can see their techniques. Look at that. It's kind of like coloring. I'm using the color, color by numbers technique for this painting. Yeah. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It looks weird and crazy, I know. And you know, I just thought of what to do for the background. <laughs> How did I choose the color palette? I didn't think about it. I just grabbed some colors, but I do want some earth tones. So I don't know about that one, but I want some earth, earth, earth tones because it's my face it's my portrait i like drawing myself okay let's go here good mm -hmm. a few times here in the mustache and we're good. I may have to wait for it to dry before I uh, do another coat. And then I do the color in it. Okay, so the darkest stuff is going to be the hair. Let's get, a, let's get a yellow. I don't come back. Oh, well, I guess I do need to, huh? <laughs> That's okay. I was going to say I don't come back for the same color because unless I'm going to to uh, uh, a second coat, but most of the time, 
if I, if I need a second count, I'll just, uh, this is too dark. If I need a second coat, I'll just remix a little bit extra paint and it doesn't have to match exactly. Don't care. There we go. It's coming out more brown. Mm -hmm. And this, I know this color is gonna need more than one coat because it's very light. All right, let's go here. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, you can tell the big difference in those two tones. It's all right. It's all right. That's why I'm experimenting because I can do whatever I want. And because it's acrylic, it is going to dry pretty fast. Okay. That's good. Keep it rolling, yo. I did choose these earth tones because I'm painting myself and um, I'm brown. So I want different browns. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Let's do uh, this right here. Mm -hmm. Come on. This looks a little, little, um, little clay, clay colored. Let's see. Oh yeah. I'm just turning, turning the the brush Ghost, it's coming along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If 
I really like this piece, I'm gonna do it again, but on the canvas, on the bigger canvas. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll tell you what. Oh yeah, I forgot the different uh, colors over here. Yeah, that's what happens. You get excited and you start just drawing and painting. Nobody told me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add another tone here. I don't know. I'm thinking it's kind of dark. We'll see how it, no, we'll see how it, how it, it dries. Uh-huh. Yeah, that red is a little weird. The brown's a little weird. It's all good. It's all good. Let's add some yellow to that brown. Let's go with this one. Ooh, too much. Cool. Well, we are um, into this drawing a lot. I'm going to speed through the next phase. I'll see you next time. Please stay tuned for more drawing, painting with DTM. And we'll see you February 1st at Tri-Cities Tattoo in East Point. You are all invited. Come on through. Buy a painting. Make it a gift to somebody. And then um, and hang out with us. At the very least, come and hang out. We're going to have a good time. Food. We're going to have some food with um, some food by 95. 95th Street Tacos. Get some good tacos. Right now I'm going over some new, some uh, older, I mean uh, a second layer. Just some. And I'm, when I'm drawing, when I'm doing the second layer, I'm really making sure I have a full, thick second layer. And I'm okay if it crosses the next color. Because I'm going to take my time to touch them up anyway. There you go. Mm-hmm. There it comes. All right. Here it is. This is the picture. Oh, let's see if we can get it right shot. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. I look cool. Uh, the wife saw it and she said it looks abstract. And that is exactly correct. That is exactly what I was going for. Uh, just kind of play around, get some shapes out, get some of the paint brushes and effect, get some of the paint. Use my little trusty, I don't know when I got this thing. 
Um, the wife must have bought it for me somewhere. I got it. I don't know where. Texas. Texas. Oh, this was in, from Texas? Artorama. Jerry's Artorama, huh? Yep, there it is. It's really cool. It's a great little tool. Um, some of these colors, I am going to let them dry. Maybe I'll maybe I keep it. What I did do, if, I don't know if you noticed that on the, uh, on the frame last video, I started another one. And so see, now that I got the, my, uh, my, my roughing warm-up skills going, now I can start a whole other piece. That is that is now more much more um, measured and in line to where I'm going with the series that I that we're gonna do for mass men. And so here's uh, the shot. The, the the table hasn't changed. I worked on my piece here. Got some markers there. Got the paints over here. Oh, I got my picture in picture. Let me take, turn that off. That is crazy, but I like it. In any case, all in all, a good painting session. It was a good day spent uh, putting things together, getting my paints out, finding some brushes, and uh, getting my head into this traditional uh, process. So expect more. I will be going live with some of my painting sessions as I work through the faces, as I work through the portraits, I am going to have to recruit Lord Yada and come out here and help me um, glue this wood. I know my wife has some wood. You have wood uh, uh, glue also? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the store is on the street. <laughs> the <store> is on. <laughs> so, uh, so that way, because there's a whole a bunch of stuff that goes with uh, each piece, a, a frame. And, uh, and the way I want to do the artwork, I want it to pop off. The backboard so it's, it's gonna be cool all right thank you for sharing this time with me stay tuned for more delta tango mike artist king